Okay, we're back. Bald man in the house. All right, here we go. We're talking about an aquatic food chain now. We talk or, or carbon cycle. Okay, and food chain. We talked about it here in the terrestrial carbon cycle and food chain. Okay, so carbon dioxide once again, carbon double bonded or sorry, yes, double bonded to two oxygens. All right, so we have two oxygens, one carbon. It's carbon dioxide, CO2. Okay, just as CO2 can be used by a tree, which is a plant, okay, a photosynthesizer, on land, okay, carbon dioxide can also be used by plant-like organisms in the ocean. So plankton here, even though he is drawn like SpongeBob, okay, he actually is a little organism in the ocean that can use carbon dioxide in photosynthesis. So it can make its own food, okay? So plankton in the chum bucket, when it showed him eating holographic lasagna, or was it spaghetti, okay? Really, plankton doesn't need to eat that food, and that's why it was okay for him to eat holographic lasagna, because he makes his own food from the sun and carbon dioxide, okay? So that really was fairly true. Now, plankton can use CO2 in this process, okay, of photosynthesis, and once again store the carbon in a new form, sugar, okay, glucose. Now, the plankton, once again, can be eaten by this fish, okay, the hungry fish is coming along just like the horse in the terrestrial food, or, or carbon cycle food chain, all right, the fish eats the plankton, and it uses the sugar inside the plankton for energy, okay, and so it can store it in its body, and at a later time, the fish, yes, even though they have gills, they do exchange gas, Okay, we breathe out CO2, the fish will get rid of carbon dioxide also. So that carbon dioxide can go back into the water. Okay? So the carbon dioxide can go back into the water. Okay? And then the carbon can be you can be put back into the atmosphere. Alright? So, and I, I did not say before, the carbon dioxide will diffuse, will be absorbed by the water, by the ocean. Okay, and then it can be used by the plankton in photosynthesis. The plankton can be eaten by the fish. The fish can basically breathe out the carbon dioxide back into the water. And it can return to the atmosphere via diffusion. It just basically is absorbed back over to the atmosphere. Okay, now, the plankton also, okay, could die. And that happens to many plankton, all right? So the plankton could kick it, kick the bucket, all right? Notice how I drew him brown with the X in the eye. He's dead. Okay, so the plankton could die and once again be decomposed by some type of small decomposer. In this case, I'm going to draw a little bacteria, okay? And this bacteria is going to break down the plankton, return the carbon back to the water as carbon dioxide, okay? Now, it's in a different form, but for this matter, simple, just simple biology, we will call it carbon dioxide. Okay, and so it is returned to the water, okay, by the decomposer, and then it can once again return to the atmosphere, or, all right, it could be used again by plankton, another plankton, in photosynthesis. Okay, so it shows you kind of the cycle that can happen in the aquatic carbon cycle, as well as the aquatic food chain, how carbon is changed from CO2 to sugar stored here in some capacity and then returned to the water or okay the sugar can be used by the decomposer as when it's decomposed it returns carbon dioxide to the water which then returns it to the atmosphere okay now the carbon also that is dissolved in the water could be cycled down to the deep ocean it could stay there for hundreds of years okay it could also be absorbed into certain type of carbonate rocks okay and can stay there for hundreds of thousands of years, okay? And so we can see the dynamic of how these cycles are interrelated. So can one carbon atom one day be used in photosynthesis in a tree, and another day somehow the same carbon atom be used in photosynthesis in the ocean? Sure, okay? So once again we remember, matter is not created nor destroyed, it is only recycled. Okay, so the carbon atom, let's say I catch a bunch of plankton and dry them and burn them, okay? Well, I'm just returning 
the carbon that was in the plankton back to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. I am not destroying that matter. So the carbon atom can be traced from here to here to here, back up to here. It could go here to the, to the ocean, to the plankton, into the fish, back up to the atmosphere, and it could go back through that process again through a different plant, through a different tree, or whatever. Okay, so the matter cycle here, it is of a carbon atom, and it shows us the relatedness, okay, how they are linked, all right? So the aquatic food chain with the carbon cycle, the terrestrial food chain with the carbon cycle, um, hopefully that clears some of that up for you with the carbon cycle and following an atom. Now, I will stop here with this last note. A lot of students get confused. When I say, okay, what happens to carbon when it is stored in this tree? And they will get confused and say, uh, it's turned into nitrogen or it's turned into oxygen. They will basically think, oh, it changes form, so it must change the atom. No, carbon remains carbon in this case, all right? So let's not confuse the carbon cycle with the nitrogen cycle. Carbon remains carbon in this cycle. It just changes form, but it remains carbon. Okay, bald man out.